Hey there, it's Elizabeth and welcome back to another ramble session. I hope you all are doing well. My goodness, this is the third time I am trying to film this video. Hopefully the third time is the charm, you know? I don't know what's going on with me lately, but we're gonna get through this together. Um, so this is my November, December, what's it called? Fobonichi. Good grief. I mean, maybe I haven't had enough coffee today. I don't know. Anywho, what I did want to start out with is I, I had a question uh, on my YouTube channel that I responded to this morning. And the question was, can you gesso in your book? And can you use acrylics, okay, acrylic paint? And my answer to that is yes and no. <laughs> my answer to that question is yes, if you're using a book that, you know, can handle that, all right? My answer is no, if you're not using a book that can handle that. So that really didn't answer your question, I'm very sorry to say. All I can give you an answer for is what I have used in my book. That's the only experience that I have is from the book that I use. I use a Staples brand gridded notebook. I don't think the back, yep, yeah, okay. My, I haven't decorated the back. So it's a Staples brand gridded notebook. It looks like this on the back and it has 100 sheets, okay? Which I do believe gives you 200 pages, something like that. Anywho, uh, that's what I use, and I glue three pages together. Now, I know the person that left the comment, the lovely subscriber that left the comment, had watched all or part of my series on the channel about how I alter my composition books. So I hope that you went through that whole series um, if it wasn't too boring for you and learned how I, how I do what I do. Now, back to the main question. Can you use acrylics and, excuse me, and or gesso? The answer in my book, yes. I have used acrylic paint from the tube. I've used acrylic paint. I've used craft paint in here. I've used acrylic paint. Um, I've used distress stains. I've used archival ink stamps. Uh, I use Posca markers, which are a, they're like a water-based paint pen. So I've used a lot of stuff in here. I've used watercolor in here. I've used Inktense pencils with water directly on the pages. So yes, I've used a lot of different media in this book and nothing, I've never had a book fall apart on me. Never. I will have to warn you though that if you're using something like watercolor or, um, you know, even Mod Podge or acrylic paint or any, any type of wet media, if you're heavy handed with it, uh, that could do something to the pages that you don't want done. Okay. Um, I don't think that the that the pages would fall apart, but because this is just simply notebook paper, it could definitely pill your paper and possibly tear it. So I would just be very careful in how wet your wet media is, okay? If that makes any sense. But again, I've used everything in these books and because I glue the three pages together making them more stiff and more sturdy I've never had a problem with bleed through I've never had a problem with pages ripping or tearing I've never had a problem with them falling out of the book um, you know none of that but again I have to just warn you this is just a simple composition book so uh, one of my suggestions to you would be to go to the back of the book, okay, like the back page of the book, and do a tester page, okay, to see how the media that you want to use, if it's acrylic or gesso, 
do a little swatch, you know, in the corner and see if it works for you, see what works and what doesn't work. That's the easiest way to figure out what is going to work on your pages and what is not. Uh, so I would definitely suggest that you go and you do a swatch page or a tester page. And I'll show you, I have a book right here. This is not a composition book. This is a mole scheme. And I just wanted to show you the tester page. See, so in the back, I did do a tester page and I have, this is just a Posca fine tip marker, a clean color, a zig clean color marker, uh, a flare pen, a Sharpie no bleed pen. These are distress stains, distress stain here. This is a Posca marker. This is just regular ballpoint pen. And if you'll notice in the back, let me get up and see if you can see it. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, see? Every single one of them shadowed or bled. Okay. Uh, the Sharpie no bleed was the only one that didn't shadow as much, but all the rest shadowed and bled through. Now, if you were going to use a, t a book like Moleskine or something like that, I would glue pages together. I, You know, that's just what I would do. And that is what I do with my books. I glue the pages together because I don't want um, any bleed through. And I like the pages to be stiff when I'm working on them. It also lends itself, the, the stiffness of the pages actually, also lends itself to using, um, you know, like three-dimensional embellishments. These I got from a lovely friend in Happy Mail. Uh, but yeah, I can use these and it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Now, if it's super duper thick, I might have an issue. And if, and when that is the case, I will simply put a file folder in between my pages so that when I work on this page, I don't get bumps or anything like that. I'm writing on a more flat surface. So there's that. Um, so I hope I answered that question. Oh, there were, there talking about questions. There are, uh, I do receive a lot of questions on, not only on my YouTube channel here, but also on a Facebook group, which is Fogonichi Journalers Facebook group. And it is a fabulous group. So if you have not checked it out, head on over. Of course, I'll leave a link below. I always do. So a lot, one of the questions that I get is like, how do I get my color on my pages? Do I do it before I write, after I write? What do I use? Is it paint? Is it pencil? And another question I get all the time is, what type of pen do I use to do my journaling in? So the type of pen I use to do my journaling in is, I hope this isn't glary, is Papermate Flare, okay? That's what I use to do my journaling in. To do my headlines in, like these right here, I use a Posca marker, okay? This is a Posca paint pen, so I use that. And when I do my titles like this one or like this one, these are done in Posca paint pen, then I take a flare pen and I outline it, okay? I do all of that first, and I do have a video somewhere on here. I'm sure it's in my tutorials maybe, or it could even be on how I prepare my Fobonichi, that uh, series, but I'll quickly go through it with you. The stages of how I work in my book, okay? This would be the first stage, a sample of the first stage. I put in either, you know, magazine clippings or whatever, or I would put in like my clip art, okay? That is the first stage, okay? Now let's see, those are already complete. Okay, here's a, here's a good example of the next stage that I do. I write in my uh, headlines. I call these headlines. I always like to title whatever I'm putting on my page. And I outline my clip art. I might put some embellishments on. And then I will write my journaling like I did over here. Sometimes I use pencil, sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes I use pencil to write in my journaling because I want to make sure that it all fits in this area. <laughs> so sometimes I do that. Um, so yeah, this is the next stage. So I had already glued on my, these were little, um, watercolor playtime I had. So I glued those in first and then I put, you know, washi tape on. Then I did my headlines and my little, um, 
uh, you know, quotes. And then I did just a tiny little bit of journaling here. I always also like to put in this, just a side note here, but I do like to put in where I got the idea for doing my little swatches. Whenever I, you know, attempt something new, I always want to put it in here so that I know where I got the idea from. Okay. Like, um, when I did this, the swatch doll here is from, well, I didn't put it on this one, but I did put it on another one because I did a swatch doll before. Oh, there she is. So I did a swatch. Oh, that's just, yeah, that's just writing. Um, yeah, I did a swatch doll here. So I put in here that the inspiration was from James Burke. So, oh, did I spell his name right? I think so. Okay, anyway, so yeah, that's the next step, right? So then after I get all this in and I get it all written in pen and Posca marker and all that kind of stuff, my last step would be, well, let's see here. Okay, my last step would be to color everything in. And I use Prismacolor colored pencils most of the time. You can use, uh, and I do use at times, Crayola pencils. However, with the the uh, Prismacolor, they have a very soft, creamy core, okay? So their color comes out quite vibrant and creamy, and I like it better. The, now, Crayola is not as waxy and is not as creamy and is not as vibrant. So I still use Crayola, but I prefer to use the Prismacolor. And again, they're a little, they are more pricey um, to purchase, but they do last quite a long time. Well, all except my yellow ones, because I seem to use yellow quite a lot. But anyway, so that, I hope that answers your question in kind of like the stages that I uh, go through to get my Fobonichi pages complete. I am oftentimes working on multiple pages at a time and uh, yeah in varying stages of completion. That is just the way that I work because I don't work on my book every single day even though I try very hard to have daily entries. I don't work on it every day so I do work in stages. Uh, what else have I, have I been working on? since this is a ramble. Um, I got this, the cat mahat. Of course, we were down in the, we were down south for the holiday, even though our holiday got botched uh, because my husband had to work on Thanksgiving. So yeah, but you know, we knew it when we signed up for it. So all is well and uh, yeah. But I was down there for, oh my gosh, a week or so, yeah. So, and my husband was commuting to work. So anyhow, we did go to the library because you know me, I always have to make a trip to the library. And I found this dictionary in Spanish, a beginning dictionary in Spanish. And um, it is a vintage book and it is so adorable, okay? It is so adorable. So I could do one of two things in here, okay? I could use, like, let's say somebody was having a birthday, um, I could just simply cut this out and make it into a journaling card and put it in my Fobonichi. Or I could actually, with my X-Acto knife, cut this page out, fold it in half, and use it as a junk journal page if I was going to make a junk journal. So these are so super cute. I just, I love vintage um, illustration. So just love it. I mean, who doesn't, right? It's just so cute. <laughs> it's just so cute. So anyhow, so yeah, I was really thrilled to find that. And then I also found um, a book of basic skills. And these are great books for junk journals as well, you know, to use as, as pages in your junk journal. And they're perforated, so you simply tear it out. No exacto knife needed. That's nice. And then you fold it in half and use it as you know, a journal page. And so I really like that. And there are a lot of, oh, Sullivan was a little angry. He was angry that day. But I did see a star back here somewhere, so he must have had a good day on that that day. <laughs> there he is, his little star for the day. Good for you, Sullivan. 
You could also, you know, just clip these out and color them in and use them in your Fobonichi or whatever. I mean, there's so many, you know, cute ideas that you could use. You could cut these out and make them into journaling tags and send them in happy mail or whatever. There are just so many ideas to using books like this. So if you find them in a thrift shop or something like that or at your library, pick it up, you know, you never know what you can use from it. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then this is the other thing I've been working on. And um, this is going to be, let's see here. This is going to be, I hope you can see that. I keep having to get up and down. Yeah, you can. This is going to be a dish towel, I do believe, because a girlfriend of mine, see, I have bought a bunch of this yarn, not a bunch, but you know, a few, whatever these are called, I don't know, balls of yarn. <laughs> That's how much I know about yarn. Um, most of you know, or if you don't know, I just started crocheting, so I know nothing about what I'm talking about. But what I do know is that I'm not fond of this. And this is really inexpensive yarn, and that is probably one of the reasons I bought it, because it was inexpensive and I was just starting out and I wanted to see if I would like it. But it this is cotton yarn. It's not acrylic yarn. And it is a lot more difficult to crochet with because the strands of yarn, let's see here, are quite thick, you know? And your hook, depending on the size of your hook, it gets snagged in those in those strands. And so, yeah, it, uh, it could be frustrating. So, and I found out too from my lovely friend who does crochet that cotton yarn isn't the best to use for blankets or anything like that. It is better suited for something like um, washcloths or this, did I already mention? I don't even know. This is going to be a hand towel for the kitchen, like a kitchen hand towel. So that's what I've been working on. And no, I did not finish the never ending throw. Um, I'm still working on that. I just haven't, you know, taken it out to work on it in a few weeks. So I need to get working on that because I would like to get that done and see what it looks like all finished. And what else? Oh, I do need to film another zine video. I need to film another zine video for you guys. I have a few more books to go through, so I really need to get going on that. I really think today is probably just going to be a, um, a video recording day, maybe. Possibly. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I did film the other day, which will pro the, that video will go up, uh, maybe later this week, but I did film, when was it yesterday? I think I filmed another shout out series video. So yeah, make sure you check that out. That's coming up real soon. I really need to make a list of like the videos that I would like to record for you guys, um, and hope that you enjoy them. So I still have some flip throughs in the queue that I just need to publish. So those will be coming. Of course, the shout outs, when I do a shout out, like, or not a shout out, I'm sorry. Oh, I need to get more coffee. When I do my ramble sessions like this one, I usually film and post on the same day. The other videos that I film, I will upload them to my computer and then I will just go and upload them to YouTube and then publish them at a later time. But anyway, so that's my problem, not yours. <laughs> um, yeah, so I need to do that. I need to do my zines. I need to make another zine holder because I do see that I have quite a few beautiful zines that need a home. So I'm going to work on that as well, maybe today. Um, as per usual, I need to go through all of my stuff and figure out what I'm gonna do with it all. I need to reorganize in here. And you know, I think the thing is, is I really need like someone to be here with me when I do it. I don't know. I think company might help. <laughs> Anybody wanna come over? Um, yeah, because I have certain things in here that, you know, 
I, I don't know. I guess it's just I need things to be put in one place, you know? Like, you know how we put washi tape in one place, you know? But then there's oftentimes that odd little bag that's over in the corner that I'm staring at right now over that way on my shelf that has washi tape in it because I'm using it for a specific project. So while I have most of my washi tape in front of me in my boxes, I have this bag over there in the corner that has washi tape in it. Hope I haven't needed any of that washi tape lately because it's not where it should be. That's what I'm saying, you know? Uh, yeah, it's quandary, let me tell you. Uh, first world problems right there. Uh, yeah, I just, I want things to be a little bit more organized as far as the projects that I work on, like having a separate area for my crochet stuff, having a separate area for, you know, papers and, and things like that that I use to make, if I were to make a junk journal, um, you know, things that I use for my glue books and collage books and I, I need separate spaces for that. But then oftentimes, you know, let me know if you, if you have this problem too in your room or your little art area, because I know everyone doesn't have a specific space. Um, and I didn't either until my kids left me. No, my kids didn't leave me. They went off to college or, I mean, they still live here, but you know the story. So yeah, I don't homeschool anymore. So <laughs> I turned the school room into my little craft room. But, um, yeah, tell me if you have the same problem with your different projects. Because I know, like, like for instance, and I know this is going on long enough. I need to just stop yammering. But, um, like, for instance, this box right here. Sorry if there's a glare. This holds, let's see what it holds, shall we? Yeah, this holds bits, okay? Bits that I've gotten in Happy Mail. Bits, bits, bits galore, okay? But I could use those in collage. I could use them in in um, my vintage glue book uh, thing. I could use them in, oh, here's a little swatch doll that all I managed to put on her was her bottom lip. Yes, that's where she went, I was looking for her. Um, you know, this can go into a collage book, it can go into a glue book, it can go into my Fobonichi, it'll probably go into my Fobonichi. Um, you know, this, I, just all these different bits in here, this is my collage glue book, if you can see that which I think I'm gonna try something different with that. I'm not happy with it, so I think I'm gonna try something different. But a lot of these things, you know, they come from um, Happy Mail and, you know, things like that, and I really want, or they just come from my kitchen, you know? Um, here's an odd picture, or the odd, it's not an odd picture, it's a beautiful picture of my daughter and her boyfriend. There's the odd picture of, of my grandniece and me eating pizza. Um, so yeah, you know, I have all these little bits and everything in here and, but I use, I can use them for different projects, you know, like this little gummy gnome or this little flower. I could use this for a glue book page. I could use it for a vintage glue book page. I could use it for my Fobonichi. I could even use it in my chat journal. So what do you guys do? What do you do with all of your bits? Do you keep them all together? Do you separate them? Because like I said, they can be used in various projects. I don't know. I'm gonna have to have a think on it and figure it out so that I can work in uh, a more relaxing space. <laughs> So, okay, I will leave you guys there and I will get to working on some more videos for you guys. Um, what's coming up, I don't even know if I've mentioned this because I've tried to film this video so many times. Um, I, ha I do have a shout out video coming up. I have a zine video coming up. Of course, I have a flip through video coming up. And I will try to continue working on more videos for you to enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I thank you for hanging out with me and sticking it out with me and listening to my ramblings. Or enduring, as I like to say, enduring my ramblings. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And I will catch you later.